Welcome back, guys. Welcome to another Today's Angler podcast here. And uh, we got a special episode for you guys today. Mr. Ramzel is coming to join the party. And uh, we might have another guest pop in on the Zoom call today as well. Uh, Larry, good to see you. It's been a while. Yeah, it has. It's been hard water time. We don't get together near as much. No, you're not going to be walking out in the middle of the lake anymore? It's not. <laughs> that's not your thing? Not this soon. Not this winter. <laughs> no. Larry. Not the last... What's up? <laughs> hey, man. Good to join you here. Thanks for coming on. No problem. Turn the heat up, will you? <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I live down here. Yeah. It was only 38 below a couple nights ago. Oh, my goodness. So stupid. So stupid. But, uh, yeah, we got a nice little episode here that uh, should blow your musky minds a little bit. Um, some stuff that... Uh, has not really been brought to the public much, and uh, I think this is a perfect time this winter to uh, bring it up. And we got Larry Ramsell here to uh, kind of shed light on the situation or some of the pre previous situations of uh, some musky stocking. So <laughs> that made sense, right? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Larry's going to help us make sense here. So yeah. Yeah, no. If I, a, if I can hear Robbie, I'll I'll help you make sense. Uh, he needs to speak up. I need to talk bit. a little bit louder. So for those of you not familiar with Mr. Larry Ramsell, uh, why don't you give us a little biography about yourself so the people at home kind of know uh, who in the heck you are here? Take up the whole show with just that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We got all day, right? Oh yeah. I've been fishing. I've been fishing muskies for sixty-two years. Yeah. <laughs> That's. <laughs> and it's been basically my life that's uh yeah that's some dedication right there I've, for I've fish muskies in 23 states and two provinces of canada yeah the addiction is bad <laughs> it it couldn't have probably gotten any worse i don't know how it could yeah oh my gosh but yeah larry's been uh part of some rather large fish what's the biggest muskie you've been a part of in the boat with you I caught a 54 and a half pounder two years ago. It was 57 and a quarter inches. That's the big. That's the biggest one I've been involved with. That was an amazing animal. What that? That was a December fish, wasn't it? Uh, yes, December. No, November. It was a November one. Yeah, November uh, 24th. I do remember that picture. I had <laughs> another 50 pounder that was a December fish. Yeah. Uh, what spot did you catch that off of, Larry? What spot? Hot spot? <laughs> the, the bait bucket. The bait, bait bucket. bucket. Yeah. I like spot that. Right here, the right side or left side? Uh, <laughs> actually, it was on the right side. Okay. <laughs> Good memory. That's funny. But, uh, yeah, well, should we dive into this, Lee? Get the backstory of what we're going to be talking about. I think it's enough jabbing. Because this is going to take up some time. Yeah, sounds good to me. Let's, uh. All right, let's start this off. Let's do some history, Larry. Um, the Lake Nancy Project. Let's get the backstory about this thing. You really want to start there, huh? Yeah, I think let's just dive right in about this this here, guy. Man. Yeah, or 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 squirmy. <laughs> well, let, let's let's preface this just a little bit. In the current issue of Muskie Hunter Magazine, the research editor Jordan Weeks has an article that's uh, titled Genetic Study Yields Answers, and the subheading is Study Suggests Leach Strain is Not the Silver Bullet for Wisconsin Muskie Waters. But then we find, as we read through the article, that the study waters that they used to write the article with are not in the native muskie range. So how can this lead to the con the uh, conclusion that uh, the leech strain is not the silver bullet for Wisconsin muskie waters when it, it didn't have anything to do with any of the native Wisconsin muskie waters. That's a very valid point. <laughs> it's, you know, uh, yeah. and those natural, those uh, muskie waters that have been stocked with the leech fish would be like Madison Chain, for example. Yep. The Nancy yep. Madison Chain, Wasoda, Pete and Well. Um, but here, here's the situation there, too. I mean, if you want to do a legitimate study, it, it, it should be fair. And uh, as I researched this article, I find that only 10.7% of the stockfish were leech-like strain. All the rest were Wisconsin strain. And 
The leech strain were much smaller at stocking in size than were the Wisconsin strain. Well, so, there's a lot of things that are stacked against these fish. How, I mean, how could you expect <laughs> the study to come out negatively against the leech strain? Right. Uh, with with a start like that. Yeah, and the biggest thing, I mean, with the Madison chain, since Lee, you're from there, I'm from there as well. And yeah, uh, well, you guys would have heard heard about fifteen over fifty. Yeah, at least out of there. at least ten to fifteen uh, fifty inch mussies have come out of the Madison chain. All each like strained fish. Uh, our buddy Noah Humfeld is a part of a fifty three and a quarter, just an absolutely beautiful tank of a muskie uh, that was caught in southern waters, and it's a leech fish, and um, you know it just. They're doing well. I mean, what, Lee? You've been a part of that chain your whole life. And how many 50s have been caught since, like, 2016, once those Leech Lake fish actually uh, got to that size? Well, I've seen this uh, fishery here grow from its infancy back when the, you know, majority of the stocking came in the uh, late 80s and, you know, was catching muskies prior to that. But that's when kind of the big majority of stocking came. Um there was not a 50 inch caught to my knowledge and I'm not good on years, but yeah. until I don't know, 10 years ago. Right. I mean, and how many in the 10 years, <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, like three, a handful. Four. Uh, Listen, most, most of the guys are keeping a quiet when they catch one. Right. Right. But I mean, you would have, yeah. I mean, that's not a lot of fish. And then the last, what, three, four years. And it's like, it's happening uh, not on a regular basis because there's really not that many leech lake fish stocked. But, I mean, it's kind of shocking to see those 50 inches. They're, you know, getting stocked so little. I mean, some of those, it's like, what, a hun- maybe 100 fish every two years? Not, it's not every year, that's for sure. Right. Yeah, so, with the VHS and whatnot. Right. So there's not, yeah, it's not a lot of them in there, but they are showing up and they're getting giant. I mean, what two years we're gonna be able to catch a fifty-five incher in Madison, and of course year. I moved. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and, and, you know, uh, too. I I I personally believe that Mr. Weeks is uh, at least for the last fifteen years has had a tremendous bias against the leech like strain, as have uh, majority of the biologists in the Wisconsin DNR, and uh, you know what. Drives me crazy is how they could sit here all those years and watch what was going on in Minnesota, and uh, not want to partake. Michigan's doing basically the same thing as Minnesota did with the Great Lakes strain of right. fish, and uh, that's exciting. That's all, that's all they're using to stock with now, regardless of where they're stocking them. Right. And uh, just to show you a little bit of Mr. Weeks' bias, he talked about the the life history of the leech like fish being different. Uh, because they come from a very large, deep, I emphasize the word deep lake, 147 plus feet deep. Well, what he also, but he doesn't tell you that 80% of that Leech Lake's 112,000 right. acres is less than 35 feet deep. So True. their life history isn't all that different than the Wisconsin yep. fish. And if they would use the Wisconsin native range lakes, for a study like this, they might not find out something very, very radic- drastically different. Right. Even if those lakes in the native range weren't native musky lakes, they're at least in the same biological yeah. uh, range latitude that uh, the fish were. And uh, Nan- Nancy Lake is a perfect example. I right. Mean, they wish they'd have never put leech like fish in Nancy Lake. I can guarantee you that. That's Larry, shocking. Larry, what's the yeah. profile of Nancy Lake? Nancy Lake is 700 acres. Uh, a good proportion of it uh, is so shallow it's not fishable. Yep. It was heavily populated with stunted northern pike. Great uh, forage. <laughs> not a good forage base. <laughs> good bait. <laughs> and uh, yet they put them in there, and 10 years later, out of that original stocking came a 54-inch, 38-pounder, and nine other fish over 50 inches in the 10th year of life. So here tenth we have a year 10-year-old uh. fish that grew to over 50 to 54 inches in 10 years. I mean, But what, yet, right. the DNR considered Nancy Lake a failure. I mean, and one of the biggest things about Nancy Lake, uh, I mean, a cool thing that, that um, 
helped probably is they did not have any couldn't musky fish for those first 10 years what i mean that's that helped probably that right, right? I was yeah yep yeah yep so i mean it did allow those fish to get rather big but how many fish were stocked in there i mean it was two stockings right uh larry i think there were three all three. together they they one year they took eggs from nancy and raised them in the spooner hatchery and put them back in nancy yep okay but the numbers are minimal but what they had trouble finding was natural reproduction but obviously uh that was wrong there's still big fish coming out of there yeah. we we know one guide friend of ours who caught what 50, 24 muskies over 50 inches in three oh, years oh he, he's joining us sooner or later here we we don't need to discuss that yet larry okay. <laughs> we'll let him talk about that yeah <laughs> we'll let... but you know the, the, for them to call it a failure when it was anything but it just shows they wanted to they wanted to cover it up yeah. in fact one of the research biologist told me one time that uh he thought they were going to make him take them net them out of there and, and, and get rid of them because they had access from that lake to the st croix river well gee whiz guess yeah. what's in the st croix river leech lake muskies lake muskies. <laughs> yeah for mississippi strain muskies, right. which is what really they are they're they came from leech lake but they're still mississippi river strain muskies right i mean they're still i mean you look at the mississippi river that's you know north of you know, kind of Bemidji area. I mean, those muskies are amazing in there. I mean, that's that's and, not know, a deep lake. Those, I mean, that's a river. I mean, shallow river that yeah, and they get giant. Yeah, when you consider the native the native range, if you go back in history, back in the middle eighteen hundreds, the Minnesota Muskie Range was part of the state of Wisconsin. So basically, what we have now is a political border, right? That has nothing to do with the actual range where these fish were naturally. Poor man got involved. Hmm. Yeah, interesting way to look at that. Right. Just because there's a line drawn doesn't mean they can't live over here. Right. Yeah, no, Crazy. that's very in- I've never thought of it that way. It's so simple. Sure. Right. Geogra- right. Geography. Right. One on one. It's a political border. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's nuts. So, Nancy Lake, the case study of 700 acres and uh, two to three stockings. And the amount of fish over 50 inches that were caught out of this lake is absolutely astronomical. Out of a lake with pike, panfish forage base, uh, no Cisco involved, correct? Right. Nope. Correct? Correct. Okay. Nope. <laughs> um, and shallow. But, I mean, it shouldn't really be that shocking to us considering you look at all the 50 inches caught in Metro Minnesota. Absolutely insane. I mean, one that the heyday of Metro Minnesota, I mean, those lakes aren't any different than ours. And they absolutely put out giant fish. I mean, it's just insane. So, Larry, I can remember a point when uh, Minnetonka really started to come on, and guys were catching legit 52, 3, 4, and even 5 inch muskies, Lake Minnetonka. And here we are in Madison, and we can't even have one person catch a 50. I'm not <laughs> saying there's anything right. wrong. With having right. the Scotties here, well, I think that the majority no. should be. Mm-hmm. But what what we does got, that mean? Right, right. I mean, there's so many test lakes up here that, you know, yeah, they're, I mean, they're not, I mean, there's so many little lakes that, like, yes, they never had muskies in them, but why not just throw a couple leeches and see what happens? Or, I mean, stock Lake Nancy again, because that was a, a huge success. And uh, I think this is time to actually sleep. <laughs> We should try to get him on there, uh, our special guest. Let me see here. Well, another thing that I've got a problem with is that the uh, biologists are trained to have a return on investment, as they call it. And uh, what they don't seem to understand is that today's muskie anglers, especially trophy muskie anglers, they're not interested in numbers. They're interested in fish that grow big. and None of these studies do they ever talk much about how what the maximum growth of the Wisconsin strain is versus the Leech Lake strain. Uh, it's night and day. And the, the other side of that coin, too, is that Leech Lake strain grow fast. They grow big fast, as witnessed by 30, 38 pound, 54 inch or Nancy in 10 years. Right. So those fish have to eat. That means they're eating anglers' baits. Yeah, no, that's the probably the big, the biggest difference of uh, Leech Lakes 
Mississippi strain fish and uh, Wisconsin fish. Wisconsin fish don't really need to eat all that much. They're lazy and st- ugh, <laughs> annoying sometimes. I mean, they live 30 years. Right. That's great, but you can't catch them. What good are they? <laughs> that's a valid point. I mean, they are special. I mean, I love them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, yes, a 50 inch uh, um, northern Wisconsin fish or anything like that. I mean, it is way special, more special than catching a leech lake strain, but wouldn't be that bad to catch some more leech lake strain muskies. <laughs> 50 you know, inches. we've had catch and release now since the late 70s in Wisconsin. It's 50 years worth almost. Uh, it's 40 years anyway. And uh, still, catch and release has been tremendous for making numbers of fish available to anglers, but the upper echelon sizes hasn't gotten any bigger than they were before catch and release started. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, occasionally a 55-inch fish might be caught in Wisconsin. But right. It's, uh, it's rare to see one over 52 inches. No. Yeah, it just it's, doesn't it's happen. Just, they the max out. Yep. What I find amazing is the fact that whatever the, the study said where it was 10.7% or whatever of the fish, yeah. uh, you know, population stocked were, uh, or sh- that fish that showed up were, Leech strain fish. How come so many of those are over the fifty inch mark? Dang. What if ninety percent compared to ten? You know, ninety percent were leeches and ten percent were Wisconsin well, strain. Then, what would that be like? That's where the biologists <laughs> argue with it because they didn't find those statistics in their study, quote unquote. Right. Uh, they weren't in the nets. So they'll just say it's hearsay. Well, nets don't tell you everything. No. Yeah. No. That's right. Well, we just wanted to bring that to light as a perfect case study that really is people don't know about. Yeah. Um, what more is there? There's a lot more. But hopefully our special guest will hop on here. i using the phone to record, so uh can't exactly see if he texts me back or not. <laughs> I did send him an email, though. So we'll see. Um. Yeah, what else? maybe let's dive into uh, the Illinois, you know, the way they uh, stock leachers back in the day a little bit. And I, they still do they still a little bit? Uh, yeah, they, they, uh, most of the leachers that were stocked uh, other than the Project Green Jeans uh, were done by private clubs. OK. And uh, in, in, in a lot of the cases, I was researching a, a, a line eye muskie alliance. Uh, paper that was put out 10 years ago by Ray Thompson talking about Illinois 50 inch muskies and uh, one thing that jumped out at me is that, that uh, a lot of the, the fish that they stocked including the Leeds Lake fish they stocked at a much higher size uh, before you know before they put them in the water okay. they, let them, they let them get big they overwintered some of them uh, really Here's uh here's one that said uh leech and Wisconsin strained fingerlings up to twenty inches in length. Well that's obviously a second year fish. Right. And then, oh, that's uh, crazy. What report is that, Larry? Pardon me? What report is that? Uh it's uh Line Eye Muskie Alliance, Illinois fifty inch muskies. <laughs> yeah, that's, that seems and, interesting. Uh, of course, the, the largest muskie that's ever been caught and released in Illinois was 54 inches. Came out of what was formerly Snake Den Hollow Lake, which is now McMaster Lake. And yep. it was caught by Todd Clannon, a friend of mine. It was 54 inches, and <laughs> guess what kind of fish it was? Right. It's like strange <laughs> fish. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Here it says uh, early stockings of Leech Lake strain in, in McMaster, Snake Den Hollow fingerlings up to 16 inches in <laughs> size that gives them a chance to go to make yeah it. yeah well i mean we're, we're wasting money stocking eight to ten inch fish sure yeah there's a lot that can i eat mean them. for years i i hollered about the, the stocking of eight and ten inch muskies in couteray right because uh, there's so many small pike. Northern pike right yeah yeah that's the big problem up here holy cow so many small pike that just that's why we've been having a lot of dinners or using them as bait because uh right i mean most of these waters you shouldn't really use them or they shouldn't even be here correct larry a lot of them they weren't native right i mean (laughs) 
that some shows of you the something. Lakes, right. Unfortunately, the DNR stocked them. Sure. Some of them they did it by accident, they claim. Right. And then of course there's probably been some anglers that's done some bait bucket stockings. Yeah, yep. But uh, anytime there, there's two different situations with muskies historically. That's uh muskies where lakes where muskies lakes and rivers I should say where muskies and pike have always coexisted. And then there's lakes like a majority of the Wisconsin native muskie range lakes that never had pike in them mm -hmm. originally. And uh, any time that pike get into that type of situation, they win. Right. It's a lose-lose situation for the muskies. Hmm. And also the lakes where they've always coexisted is where you get your bigger fish. Black like cool. Eagle Lake. Is Eagle, Eagle Lake, Lake one of those? Pardon? Black Seal, Eagle Lake, that's all kind of the same. Is that kind of the lakes you're talking about? Yep. Yep. St. Lawrence River. Yep. Georgian Bay. Lake St. Clair. Yeah. Yeah, the proof's in the pudding there. That's kind of kind of interesting. Yeah, and Leech Lake, too, I would assume, right? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Sure. Oh, that's and crazy. Right. Yeah, and I mean, one thing about those... Those nettings. Well, you know, right. over time, evolution takes care of itself. Uh, sure. Muskies and lakes where they've always been piked, they had to learn to to exist uh, cohabitation with the pike, so they spawn in deeper water. Yep. They spawn twice. Um, they get much bigger. They have many more eggs. Grow faster. <laughs> yeah, they grow faster. And, uh, yeah, uh, Canadian record fish that caught by Ken O'Brien in 1988 had 850,000 eggs in it. <laughs> well, that's part of the, that's part of Mother Nature's strategy. Right. Uh, compensate for being in waters with full of pike. Yep. That's a lot of eggs. Take the average amount of eggs in a, in a lake that doesn't have pike, like northern Wisconsin lakes, you, the literature is, is full of data on that that you know we're talking a hundred thousand to maximum two hundred and fifty thousand eggs and most of those eggs are a smaller diameter than the hmm. lakes eggs from the great lakes stream fish gotcha well that makes sense you know. so where does uh green bay fall into place here that's great lake stream yep um the reintroduction from there came from great lakes strain fish from michigan but it was from the Indian River spread, which is connected directly to Georgia, to Lake Huron. Oh, and, really? Uh, also, uh, you know, it's in, it's, a, it's a native Great Lakes strain fishery, hmm. so they're using the right stuff. So have they actually put uh, technically leech uh, fish in the bay as well? Not to my knowledge. Yeah, so it's been all, all Great Lakes stream. Great Lakes style fish. Yeah. Unfortunately, there was a five year hiatus of stocking because of VHS, but uh, still, it's still putting out the giants. Yeah. Those fish are unreal. Yeah. And they carry the <laughs> weight, too, with that fertile water there. That's for sure. Lots of sand to sit on. Gosh, those things are fat. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been over there near as much as I should be, but. One experience I did have, we caught 16 in two days, so. Wow, what was that? Was that late season trolling? No, that was August. August, gotcha. Yeah. Was that when the fishery was a little bit younger? It was, uh. Oh, there's a, there's the man. About five years, five years ago, I guess. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. I got it. I can't hear you yet, Pete. <laughs> Are you supposed to be able to hear me? Oh, yeah. Now we got you. Pete Main is in the house, Larry. <laughs> no, I can't see the screen. Yeah. So. Hi, Pete. <laughs> Hi, Larry. How you doing, man? Doing good. What's up? You're warm. <laughs> oh, I, I'm just happy to be enjoying this technology. You know, I, I love it. I love it. <laughs> you scared me. I was like, wow, that, Lee looks different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. But um, yeah, yeah we, we've we got Mr. Pete Mayna in the house, special yep. guest. Thank you for joining us, Pete. And uh, I know Pete was going to shed a little light for us 
uh, on our last topic of discussion, basically, was Lake Nancy. Yep. Uh, yeah, I want to give a little backstory about that magical place, Pete. <laughs> you so, kind of uh, like that place, huh? Well, I, yeah, I used to. I used, I to. used to, yeah. <laughs> It uh, see, I didn't, I didn't know what you guys exactly were talking about before. So now I'm so curious. But uh, I, I assume uh, Leech Lake Strain had something yes. to do with it. Yeah, yeah, yep, sure. yep. We were just saying, uh, we were just wondering what were your uh, kind of results from that lake? Because, um, like Larry mentioned, uh, DNR said it was a, it was a failure. Which, uh, from your understanding, it probably wasn't a failure. <laughs> I would imagine. Oh. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, to make a real long story short, they... You can uh, make it long, too. It's all good. We got time. Oh, uh, oh, of course, we have to have intruders as soon as we start the Zoom meeting. That's we have okay. three dogs, by the way. You may hear a little more of them. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> so the shorter version is uh, I, I waited to fish it the year it opened and, until late fall because a lot of people were messing around on it. And... Yeah. Uh, wasn't as easy as I thought, but uh, fortunately, I uh, the second time I was there, I, I stuck a pretty big fish and, and, and started fishing it a bit. And essentially, when I realized what was there and what was going on, I immediately became aware that uh, I better keep my mouth shut and only fish right. it during the weekdays, frankly. Yep. And, yep. and essentially, it was... Uh, well, without without any doubt, uh, the the best musky fishing I'd ever experienced in the, in the state of Wisconsin uh, for a, for a period of uh, six seven years. Really? And I uh, yeah, and I and I, I I kept it quiet and and I uh, or as quiet as possible. Right. And during the process of it, I talked with uh, DNR guys that were in, in charge of the particular body of water. And I, I had heard this multiple times, but, uh, you know, they were basically saying the whole project was a failure. Uh, there was absolutely no natural reproduction that they could tell. They could hardly get any fish in the nets. Yep. And of course, I, you know, I, I was caught at the boat landing there when I got this discussion at one point, and uh, he basically said, "What? Well, why are you here?" And I, well, I just check and then out, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And he basically <laughs> told me I was wasting my time, and I said, "Well, I drove a long way. If you don't mind, I'll waste my time today." Yep. And uh, Come on. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so eventually uh i did tell uh after it was kind of you know it, it was getting found out and fish eventually get old and die and they right. you know, they obviously die from handling mortality and different things uh and in that in that case uh, big fish died because they were just kept because they were big right know? right and, i mean for most of those locals i'm sure i mean seeing 50 inch fish like that we're like wow that's going on the wall <laughs> without a doubt you oh, know right yeah yeah the numbers of uh big fish were exceptional i would say the uh the average size was 46 inches but i eventually <laughs> did tell tim simonson what had gone on yeah yeah uh you know after it was you know oh. kind of it wasn't over obviously the fish were still in there right. I, I i'm no expert i wasn't you know w with regard to the you know putting numbers together and and all of that I do know there had to be natural reproduction from my observation, unless they were lying about stocking more in there, which sure. I, you know, as my understanding, it was just the first batch, but there was definitely natural reproduction. I, I don't know if it was uh, at a level that would be considered average, below average, or, or right. high, I, you know, even though they were getting in, the, they, they were definitely reproducing. Yeah. To so a certain how, extent, and, and the project was definitely not a failure. It, right. So, so how many fifties do you think you boated in the in that short time period you were fishing it? Oh gosh, uh, I I know it was. Uh, <laughs> it's going to sound stupid, but it's true. Like like twenty, and then yeah. a lot of uh, 
and this is this is not fishing it much no it was it was like uh you know all uh all the time one of my one of my favorite lakes when i'm guiding full-time was you know coudere and you yeah. know as far as as far as i could tell i got i got 12 over 50 out of coudere with way more yeah. hours on the water right uh, right when i got here so right. you know it was right. it was stupendous and and there was an <laughs> awful lot of uh uh you know the upper 40s which nobody you know we all want to talk about 50s but right you know, the 40s but some yeah <laughs> i mean they were just you know it, yeah. it, it was uh it, it was something you just even weren't remotely used to you you would what you would you would expect to catch in uh you know 10 days trophy wise you could you could uh you know average in about uh four or five hours there you know Stupid. It, when they're really when they're happened. biting yeah holy yeah. cow it's right. oh, nuts so, uh, so Pete, you could almost kind of compare it to some of the Minnesota lakes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, you know, it was it was like any other stock lake syndrome, Lee. I mean, yeah, I think you agree that you know it's uh, the strain itself. I believe is a is a better, superior strain. But uh, you know, there's no doubt that the stock lake syndrome is a little bit that that's a whole nother level than just a strain in a lake. I mean, you you, you definitely faster growth rates and and then obviously to a certain extent a, a, a little better level of stupidity uh, right w- with the fish initially in the in, in the first year classes which of course is advantageous to the angler right right um what did those fish look like were they heavy or were they just kind of normal skinny uh what were their builds like for a for a body of water like that, I thought they were really good, and you yeah. know they they were uh, average to a little above average, and once in a while you get a tank. I remember really? we we never got a super giant out there, but uh, what does that mean, Pete? Sometimes what what is what does that mean? <laughs> what what do you think was the biggest? Well, I <laughs> I saw them in there up to fifty five, and and Jeez. we we lost, you know. Uh, we lost a couple like that but there was uh most of them were you know average average build but there there was one about 52 that i'm i'm sure was over 40 pounds really was, was that a fall fish yeah it was fall fish wow it was, it was just one of those that was built like a railroad yeah tie. but whatever yeah. for for a body you know it was amazing to me because you're talking uh you're, you're talking a body of water that's uh th- th- that's small and 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 the forage base would be i would think considered average at best yeah yeah best for sure for, for growth i mean there wasn't any ciscos or whitefish or trout or anything like that in there. yeah gosh that's absolutely amazing i'm always like kind of born 10 years 10 years too early or too late i guess <laughs> that would have been fun to go see what that was all about Jeez, that's nuts. <laughs> Ugh, that's cool. Well, we uh, appreciate you sharing that. Um, that's crazy. What does that mean? We can have Lee, that what does it all mean? Else. Yeah, or that's what it just, means. Right, or just do it over again. I mean, what? I mean, what sense does that mean? Not having that as a option. option. I mean, just a few. I, I mean, that's just crazy to me. Yeah. And they didn't even stock that many fish to begin with. That's what's really wouldn't have cost that much. Ugh, that's nuts. Well, when it was getting busy, how many boats were out there, uh, Pete? It never got uh, it never got completely flooded because yeah. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it was really easy. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, but but yeah, I mean you you know you could get about. I, I basically quit when there'd be like three or so. Yeah. You know, sorry. Okay. Sure. Not, you know, obviously everybody knows who I am, and I'm. I, I was. Right. I was. I was filming sometime, and I didn't want to do any of that around. You know, so, oh, other boats. Sure. You know, I kind of phased out, but it was. It was definitely getting tougher. It, it was still worth fishing. Right. Right. Without a doubt. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I did enjoy a period of time where there was you know very little pressure overall. Right. Uh, one in for one fact I'd like to throw out there is um. Our our good buddy Chris Willen, um, I believe he was out there in two thousand nine. So I mean, this could help the you know the cause of saying like, oh, there's no natural reproduction for this body of water. But uh, he hooked into one of the biggest fish of his life out there, 
in 2009. So like, yeah, how is right? Right. I mean, that's that's crazy. And uh, his year, his buddy after that, he got a uh, 49 incher. So I mean, that that 49 incher is not coming from 1988, 1990. No. You know that that's 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 a fish that reproduced or. Oh, I found some data here. Three stockings, 84, 87, and 90. Yeah. I mean, the 49-inch fish isn't, that's not, I mean, that's 10 years ago, you know? And then, yeah, what did you say? 2016, you heard of a giant caught, Larry? Uh, yeah, it's 55-incher. Yeah. I mean. And it's mounted. Yeah. Yep. That's so, insane. Pete, what was the longest fish you guys actually measured out there? Well, I did. I wasn't measuring them either. I did, I would say about fifty three, and 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 I don't I don't think I saw them bigger than fifty five. I maybe saw fifty six. Yeah. Whatever. Those were huge fish right. in a puddle. You know that. I mean, for a little body of water in northern Wisconsin, I mean, you just you just don't normally see fish that are attaining that length, and 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 also how fast they did it. Right. I mean. What what was the first year, Larry? I mean, the, the, these fish were over fifty inches, and and been probably a forty pounder or two whacked in a matter of nine nine years, right? Nine it ten years. Ten, it was ten years, and the first year they opened it up it was uh, at least ten over fifty inches caught, with the largest one being a fifty uh, fifty four incher that weighed thirty eight pounds. That's a ten year old fish. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. It's not right. Yeah, that that would suck to have more of that. Right. I mean, yeah, uh, that'd, that'd be terrible, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, it's uh, hard to believe we have that potential now down here in the southern part of the range. Right. Yeah, I mean, with Madison. Yeah, and you know, Lee, if, even if these studies are accurate that the leech lake fish don't do well in the southern waters, there's a lot of lakes in the northern part of the state that is in the native range that aren't native musky lakes that could benefit greatly for from sure having yeah. these fish put in there and, and uh you know muskies built northern wisconsin right and uh yeah what's the what's the quote built the schools in northern built, wisconsin built, <laughs> built the schools in northern wisconsin and uh you know it could happen again right well we should make light of that fact that the big uh you know the big bias of or you know whatever the big reason not having the leech fish stocked in the musky native range, northern Wisconsin, is putting them in lakes that already had muskies to upset the balance of natural fish. I just want everybody to kind of be clear on that, why that's yeah. uh, not taking place. Yeah, you want to go into how that's all divided up, Larry? How the how they divide all the sections of the state for per strain of Wisconsin fish? Well, you got the Wisconsin River drainage and the Chippewa River drainage, and that's your two major drainages for the state. They all end up, all that water ends up in the Mississippi River eventually. Right, right. So, you know, and after the glaciers left us 10 to 12,000 years ago, that's that's where these fish came from. Yeah. And uh, what happened is a lot of them, when the water receded, uh, there was a lot of potholes from the Yep. Scored out by the scoured out by the glaciers and the muskies were trapped in there and that's why so many lakes in the native muskie range didn't have pike because the muskies came first and then the water wasn't mm -hmm. high enough for the pike to get in there later except through rivers so sure. places that had uh, that were not uh, drainage lakes they were they were musky only lakes forever till man got involved so technically before there was dams I mean a Mississippi strain fish could have yeah. Swam all the way I mean, up the I mean, there was some River. natural barriers, like, sure. uh, okay. like the like the falls at uh, Saint okay. Croix Falls. Yep, yep, sure. But uh, you know, before the before the uh, water receded that far, they swam wherever they wherever wanted they to swim. Went. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> I mean, what is the actual range? You know, so you anyway. know, and I had a biologist tell me that uh, even with a, a lake that only ended up with three fish in it, that's yeah. enough to start a population. No kidding. No. Uh, it would go against their mantra of genetic di diversification mm -hmm. by using numbers. Yeah. For instance, their their uh, current stocking regime, they want at least twenty five pairs. Okay. Uh, to get eggs from to have diversity, <laughs> but those lakes that only had three to start with, there wasn't a whole lot of diversity. Diversity at the <laughs> beginning, no. <laughs> but they still seem to do all right. 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 Huh. Well, that's an interesting fact. Wow. <laughs> 
That's uh, I know I have not heard that one from Larry because that's uh <laughs> makes sense to me. Wow. Well, Larry, Larry, did you guys get into the uh the whole topic of getting these things into Coudere when we sat at those meetings back when trying to talk them into that? Oh, oh yeah, we uh you know we we, we made a, a multiple suggestions when we after we did about uh, probably two thousand hours of research. And uh, we suggested, uh, A, isolate the current genetic giants in some of these waters, like Couturier and Grindstone and the Chippewa Floyds, and isolate them in ponds where they can be accessible for taking eggs. Uh, our other option, of course, was the Leech Lake strain of fish, that, uh, in a, particularly in a place like Couturier that is now full of pike, the Leech Lake strain or the Mississippi River strain muskies spawn in deeper water, right? Which uh, is 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 the case also that I found in doing tracking studies on Eagle and Wabagoon lakes in northwestern Ontario that were both pike and muskie lakes. The pikes spawn in shallow water, where muskies normally spawn in our small lakes yeah. here. But the bigger the the muskies were spawning in in water thirteen feet deep with with uh, cabbage weeds or chara which is what they found in leech lake uh, that's why for so many years the minnesota dnr couldn't catch leech lake fish to use in the hatchery so they were using the stunted uh shoe pack strain of fish which don't get much over 40 or 42 inches right. if that and uh once bob strand and doc cotton got together and caught a couple of leech lake fish and planted yeah. transmitters in them they found out they were spawning in these offshore humps with char beds on them and uh at that point the game was over right i mean they, found them, they yeah. figured out how to net them and uh started using them in the hatchery and uh we know the rest of the story right larry <laughs> what is the chara bed c-h-a-r-a is that what you're saying yes yes it's uh kind of like a steel wool <laughs> if you will only not huh. quite that dense um that's the stinky it, weed that gets on your rubber baits when you hit bottom. Yep. That's possible. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be. But yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and on Eagle Lake, there was no chara bed, so they were using uh, uh, 13 feet of water uh, green cabbage beds. Um, and, and muskies are different than pike. When they spawn, they broadcast their eggs, but they don't have any uh, adhesive properties to them. So if they're if they're not able to to be suspended above the silt in the bottom, like by catching on a, a leaf of a, a, a cabbage bed or something, or or laying on top of a chara bed, they, they just suffocate and die. Whereas the pike, when they spawn, uh, their eggs have a sticky substance to them and they'll stick to whatever they, they float by. So, so that's why pike has so much more uh, success at reproduction than muskies do. Wow, I've not heard that. Come on. Hmm. Right. Trying to find a char bed. Well, Larry, I meant the uh, met, uh, I meant that you discuss all the lame excuses that we heard at some of those meetings about why the Leech Lake strain could not be put in Coudre. Not really. Well, yeah, I mean, what happened is it, is the American Fisheries Society had a meeting in the Wisconsin, and I think it was 1992. And after uh, almost a hundred years of mixing stocks all over Wisconsin, they uh, they came to an agreement that they shouldn't be mixing stocks. So from that point forward, they didn't want to do any cross drainage stocking or mixing of fish from another drainage like the the Mississippi strain fish, uh, even though they all came from there originally. But uh, what they again don't tell you is that if it was convenient for them, it was okay to do it. For instance, when the Spooner hatchery shut down for repairs, they stocked all the the western Wisconsin musky lakes with fish from the Woodruff hatchery, which is in the eastern part of the state, in the Wisconsin drainage. And then just a few years ago, I caught them stocking the Flambeau Floyds, which is in the headwaters of the Chippewa River system and should be getting fish from the Spooner Hatchery. Mm -hmm. They were stocking it from the Woodruff Hatchery because it was closer and they could save a little bit of fuel. Sure. And uh, 
I told Tim Simonson, I said, if that doesn't stop immediately, I'm going to blow the whistle on you. Yeah. So, you know, when it was convenient for them, it was okay. But when musky fishermen want fish that grow big and grow yeah. big fast, it's not part oh, of their I'm sorry, plan. we can't help you out. Hmm. So, uh, and I defy anybody, and I think we may have talked about this before, but uh, I defy anybody to tell me other than lakes connected to the Wisconsin River or the Chippewa River, uh, what lakes in northern Wisconsin are native musky lakes. There's just no way possible. to prove it. Yeah. Because starting in the early 1900s, right. they used to load yeah, the milk jars. I the, remember the reading milk that article. on a train, yeah. and if you wanted fish for your waters, you told them, and they'd make a whistle stop and yep. offload the uh, milk cans into your wagon, and you go put them whatever lake you wanted them in. So I guarantee that that's how a lot of our, quote, native musky lakes became musky lakes. Jeez. Yeah, I mean. I know in, in the Hayward area, the Hayward Rod and Gun Club was was in the forefront of doing that in the Hayward area. Really? Huh. Yeah. I mean, what what is a, yeah, I mean, that's such a great point. I mean, you know, how do we know? And the mixing of genes. Let's talk about that a minute because that's kind of a sore spot with me too. Yeah. Let when, it rough. Doc, when Dr. Brian Sloss got the results from, we, we had contended that 50 years of mixing stocks in Couderay had screwed up the original genetics. Sure. So one of the things that he delighted in coming forth with uh, when some of the first genetic work was done after they, the DNR gave him a quarter of a million dollars to play with, um, that 50 years of mixing hadn't affected the base genetics of Couderay. Well, what he didn't tell us was that maybe it didn't affect the base genetics of Couderay, but it did create a second strain Same. of fish which were basically hatchery strain fish right. okay in Couderay. so there's when if when they take eggs from Couderay now they don't know whether they're getting eggs from the base genetics right. of Couderay or, or the, the hatchery fish non reproducing hatchery strain of fish huh. there is no evidence in any lake in northwestern wisconsin that's been stocked with spooner hatchery fish of any natural reproduction from those stockings no kidding so what's the point wow it's just it's craziness. <laughs> that's that's a big bomb to drop. It's yeah, holy cow. So, so we need more uh, fish. As we yeah, are and then now now with the cutting stocking, it's like these fish aren't reap. Wow, well, that's a thought. That's a sad thought. You know, Thanks, they, Larry. They used to, they used to put uh, the small fish yearlings in in Couderay and feed the pike. Uh, we bought K. Caleb Fish Farm fish that were a year and a half old in, in 2009 stocked uh, 540 in Round Lake mm -hmm. and uh, I think 40 in Couderay and a few in uh, yep. Whitefish. Um, and Round Lake is showing big, big returns. I had a, a DNR technician tell me that there's more mid 40 inch size fish in no Round Lake kidding. than any lake in Sawyer County because of that one stocking of. of Growth, Caleb's extended growth fish. How big did you say? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. They were a second year fish. So the males were 13 inches. The females were up to 21 wow. inches. Huh. And we paid we paid big bucks. We yeah. paid over twenty thousand dollars to get those fish, but that's twenty thousand dollars that contributed directly to the fishery, right? And didn't feed northern pike. Do you think those fish will spawn, or do we? You're not sure yet. Well, I, I maybe I don't know why they wouldn't reproduce. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um. Does anybody know where that Caleb's fish came from? What body of water? He had 25 different brood lakes, and he got them from a number of different places. But from 1939 to 1942, the DNR had a hatchery at the Winter Dam on the Chippewa River. Yep, where those the, big... Where the Chippewa Floyds yep. drains out. And uh, I know Caleb got some of those fish. Really? Which would have been a pure Mississippi River strain. And I know he got some from the Mondu Floyds. Yep. Uh but like I said, he had 25 different lakes, but I can tell you this for a fact, he had one 57 inch female that he used for majority of his eggs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why wouldn't you? Right, right. Here, here's one thing that, that upset me about Dr. Sloss, and I asked him point blank at the first Muskie Committee meeting. I said, what you're telling me is that you don't care whether they grow big or not, you just don't want to mix them up, and he said, that's correct. But, uh, uh, <laughs> wow. Say yeah, that, that sucks. If, if let me let me get my head straight on this. He he didn't he didn't uh, 
he didn't care if they didn't grow big as long as they were the pure genetics. That's that, that in other words, he's a genetic genetic purist. Sure. But his mantra, his his guidance to the DNR was they have to take eggs from all sizes of fish. So they're sp they're spawning 28 inches to 38 inches to 48 inches if they can catch them. Right. But here's the thing that that bothers me. They don't know that that 28 incher is ever going to get any bigger. Right. I mean. So why would you want eggs from it? Right. But if you take eggs, all your eggs from the 48 incher. Got a pretty then good you idea. You know, you got some genes yeah. that can get at least to 48 right. inches. Right. right. It's, I and don't that's know. the part that makes me crazy. I mean, if you take big, if you take eggs from big fish, then you know you got genes that can get big. Yeah. If you take eggs from little fish, you got no clue. So, what's your thoughts on that latest musk hunter um, article? It said, I mean, how genetics don't really play a part. I mean, what is? I mean, well, how does how does that get explained? I mean, they always talk about got to be the forage, it's got to be the lake, it's got to be all these other factors, but they hate talking about genetics. I mean, you know, I you can have the 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 best forage and the best. But what if you stock? You can have everything perfect. But you put West Fork Chippewa fish in. If you put shoe pack fish in yeah. there, guess what? You're getting shoe They're going to grow to 38 inches and stop. Huh. So you got to have the, 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 It's all genetics. It's very simple in my mind. Yeah. Take I, a look at the Georgian Bay, the St. Lawrence River, Lake Nipissing, Eagle Lake, Wabagoon, Lake of the Woods. Mm -hmm. They've all got big fish and they've all got big genetics. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty. It's pretty not rocket science. Uh, yeah, it shouldn't be. It really shouldn't be. It makes sense to me. But they, they always, yeah, they always discuss how it's the lake, it's the forge, it's a whole. All, I understand. All the different, you know, which I probably play a role, but I understand return on investment. Uh, a lot of musky fishermen just want to catch a musky. That's yeah. fine. And there's a lot of places that have that ability. Right. But most musky anglers today. Why is the benchmark 50 inches? Because it's big. Right. <laughs> that's you know, the when I was fish growing up, a four-footer was a big fish. Yeah. Well, that's only two inches less than 50 right. inches. Right. But it's that magic number, number. 50, yep. Yep. that everybody's looking for. And if you don't have the genetics that can get to 50, you ain't going to catch them. Right. Very and simple. When, when did the 50-inch mark really became the staple? Was that Minnesota days? Is that really well, where I think it came? Probably that's where it got started heavily because they were catching so many of them right, over got popular, 50. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, yeah, magic number. It's not a 48 inch or it's a right. 50, 50 yep, or it's yep, a 52 yep. or a 55. There's a zero there. Yeah, so it became, somehow it became the magic benchmark, yep. but I still think a four footer is a heck of yeah, a fish. <laughs> yeah, like, what about that fish this year for you there, yeah. Larry? That was fun. <laughs> 48 I'll take them all day long. Yep. Yeah, Absolutely. how big was that one he uh, caught on the Top water chopper, the forty-eight and three quarter. He can finally get it now. Forty-eight and three quarters. <laughs> Maybe I should give this to you now. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, Lee. I, 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 <laughs> Lee found that one. <laughs> I will treasure it forever, and it will get used. It's not going to hang on the wall. That's for I sure. Dropped that. I dropped that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Pete, what is your thought on like the fifty-inch benchmark when that became really a thing? I don't know. You know, when I started, it was thirty. We killed them all in. So I don't, right. I don't really remember 50 being a thing until catch and release really caught on. And that kind of seemed to sure. be, you know, the big, the big mark if you actually caught and released to 50. But yeah, yeah, yeah frankly, I, I could care less initially uh, yeah. about 50. It was like, you know, yeah, we killed them and weight was the most important thing. So a nice fat 47 would do, I guess, in a way. <laughs> yeah, 30 pounds used to be the benchmark when we were going by weight. Right. Huh. You can get a 47 inch that weighs 30 pounds easy. Right. I mean, I caught one in Illinois that was 47 inches, weighed 32 pounds. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, that's a yeah. big fish anywhere you go. Right. But, uh, Absolutely. Somehow, like you said, Pete said, uh, catch and release is what yeah, brought the brought 50 it. into play, I think. I just read that article that you Probably just Probably because yeah. after catch and release really took hold, there was so many big fish being caught right. that had to have a dividing line somewhere. So right, right. Yeah. Well, 50 inch no clubs park. And this, this article I got from the Illinois uh, uh, Muskie Alliance, uh, Illinois 50 inch muskies. Right. I mean, it's, it, it, it means something. Yeah. 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 Uh, Pete, what do you think? Uh, do you think uh, LCO, why was it good then? Well, what's your opinions on? Uh, you said probably 12 over 50. What do you think was the cause of that? Was it a 
do, do we know if any Caleb's fish I, guts? I, I'll chip in on that. Okay, I would love it. to hear. Um, what's your thoughts on it? Because I mean, you go well, to Lacouture now. Do you? I mean, that's a shot in the dark, correct? Well, that's just a numbers deal to a certain yeah. extent. I mean, in, in my experience, Couture has always been one of the places around here where you got a shot at a 54, yep. maybe even 55. I think, you know, yep. a lot of that is the forage base as well. But, you know, I yep. don't know nearly as much about the other end of it. You know, Larry Larry would know more. But there has to be at least a decent strain out there. Yeah, that would that's produce in that. There, stock in there, and, and there's enough forage in there to, you know, to have them get big. So I always, you know, in my guiding years, I, uh, yeah. I definitely would target that a lot because I had mainly trophy fishermen. And what was the that's most cool. disappointing thing to me, I can tell you guys about that whole time period when we were trying to talk them into, into doing it. And we had the meetings with the new swinger there and, and, uh, it was really interesting stuff because, you know, and I'm not, I'm not trying to brag here, but I don't think there was anyone around at the time that really could have attested to the, the, the contrast and had literally experienced everything more than myself right at that point, because yeah. at the time we had been told that Couture had been, uh, you know, no spawning for, I don't know how long, there's no natural reproduction. Right. So now we got the Minnesota phenomenon going on and, yep. and Couture was by far my favorite lake and I was still doing guiding. So for trophy, I had fished it from one end to the other. And, yep. and we were also testifying about what's going on in Minnesota and we heard all kinds of stuff. Oh, the lakes are bigger over there. And of course I, I'm like, no, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm seeing yeah. Minnesota strain fish on 700 I'm, acre, thousand acre right. lakes. We went through all of that. And then they, they tried to tell me that I hadn't covered everything on Couture. There's probably <laughs> bigger ones running around out there and more big ones than you realize. And I'm like, no. It, it I'm out like, there oh, every you, day. Yeah, you aren't fishing the deep water. I'm like, no, actually, I've casted just about all of the deep water, and I know I've trolled all of it. Yep. And I've fished all night, and I've fished all day. There's not an hour of the day that I haven't fished. Yeah. I know it's out there probably better than anyone at that time yeah. I, I couldn't say that right now but at that time no doubt yep and I, I was also that's what I was doing at that time I was still fishing Couture a lot running to Minnesota about yeah. 40 50 percent of the time so sure yeah you I saw exactly both what ends. Was yeah. going on and these bozos are trying to tell me that you know I'm <laughs> that, essentially when, when I know darn well right. and Larry Larry's back and the other stuff up with the, you know, the strain information and stuff like that. And, right. You know, but you're actually fish. fish. I mean, you're fishing, you know, well, let me, yeah. uh, let me ask you a question, Pete. Uh, would you say that your prime years on Couture were about the mid eighties? That was, it was better then. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, here, here's what I discovered in, in my research in the stocking history of the state that most of the time, uh, particularly early on, they would take in all their eggs from Couture and then they built a, a, a fishery out of Bone Lake with Couture fish. And uh, then they started using Bone Lake for 40 or 50 years uh, and putting them fish back into Couture. But what I discovered was that in 1972, they took eggs from the Chippewa Floage. Hmm. And if they got a hold of some big gals with some good genes, yeah. that's that. The fish that year from the hatchery from Chippewa Floyds went back into Couture, mm -hmm. moved forward 13, 14, 15 years. Mm. And I know Pete was catching big fish out of Couture. Uh, yeah. Bruce Shumway was catching okay. big fish out of Couture. And there was a, a few year period there where a lot of really big fish were showing up. Okay. And it, it kind of, if you work backwards, it could have been fish from came from that stocking from the Chippewa Floyds. Would that have been the, the winter dam? That they're taking fish from? Uh, no, not in '72. Okay. That, that okay. would have been just normal. Gotcha. Chip, yep. but they didn't use the chip very often back in those mm. days for for muskies. But that particular year, there was okay. And then you move forward to the mid '80s, and a lot of big fish showing up in Couture, and it it kind of correlates that it could have been the genes sure. from the chip. Huh. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. That's a long um, time ago. Yeah. <laughs> what What do you think your magic years were? Was it that time period, Pete? 
Oh yeah, without yeah. a doubt. And uh, but back to the you know the realization of that topic. So they're they're telling us that there's absolutely no natural reproduction there, right? So now yeah. now we've got a leech lake strain that we know grows bigger, even though they argued as much as they could possibly try. In the end, this is the part I remembered. I'll never forget was the <laughs> why why Minnesota was better. New Schwanger finally thought that, well, maybe those fish are stupider. And I, I remember saying, yeah, well, <laughs> nobody would like to catch faster growing, get bigger, stupider fish. That would, that would really suck. I mean, nobody would enjoy <laughs> that. would suck, wouldn't it? Uh. But, uh, <laughs> but, but so now we got a strain of fish that's going to grow bigger and the other, the other strain in there is not reproducing. So you've got, you've got also the potential to Get natural reproduction on the strain of fish. Exactly, that was my biggest point. The, the Leech Lake fish spawn offshore. Cooter right. Bay has got some great offshore spots oh, yeah. that they perfect. could spawn in. And uh, if they would then start naturally reproducing, look at the burden that would remove from the hatchery system. Exactly. And look what it would do for the fishery and for the yeah. tourism in Hayward. It would be just mind-boggling, but they don't want to talk about it. Yeah, that's yeah, crazy. You touched on tourism. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what would that be like having a few puddles up here just having 50 inch fishing? I mean, that would draw so many people to this area. It would keep people from leaving. <laughs> no, nobody likes to do that, guys. No. No. Larry, how many people bought cabins in northern Wisco to search for big muskies? You know how many people I've talked to that have a cabin on the Chippewa Floyds that are really, really pissed? <laughs> I mean, there are guys who bought their lifelong dream yeah. on the Chippewa Floyds thinking they were going to catch big muskies, and they are crying the blues. Yeah. Some of them have already sold out and moved. Yep. Uh, some of them are in a position financially where they can't, and uh, they are not happy. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it's sad, really. Ugh. Pete, what did uh, – what did – Millax, uh, particularly, and the Leech Lake uh, fisheries yeah. due to tourism in Minnesota. <clears throat> excuse me, in Minnesota. Oh well, of course it's it's nuts. Yeah, you find it, it. It's pretty simple. People like to catch fish, and if they're bigger fish and there's and, and there's more of them, that that makes it even better. It's just that simple. I hate to simplify it, but nothing else needs to be said other than that. Right. Yeah. It's tremendous and you you know you, you, you couldn't keep the musky fishermen away from lax when the, when the word got out on that all the resorts there especially on the north shore yeah. must, the guys are beating down their doors of course we're some of us are a little cheap and they want to camp in the yard and use boat landing and that kind of thing yeah. but, <laughs> but no it, it, it draws people i mean right. that you know very 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 simple yeah. One, one of the reasons I quit guiding is because my clients told me, Larry, we love you and we love fishing with you, but we're going to Minnesota where we can catch big fish. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> I didn't I blame them. Right. I didn't blame them. <laughs> you want to go out? Don't know, Pete is who, uh, you know, showed me the Minnesota thing on Leech Lake for the my first muskie I ever caught in Minnesota. And pretty much uh, within that week, I decided I was moving to Minnesota during the uh, you know, J uh, July through November months to go target those fish. <laughs> so thanks, Pete. Yeah, thanks, for your Th thanks, big muskies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. If they were little muskies, you probably wouldn't have gone, Lee. No, exactly. probably not. <laughs> Guarantee Proving that point. Proving that point. Uh, Just the thought yeah. of revenue alone, muskies in Minnesota, of yeah. folks from Wisconsin visiting Minnesota. That, that number would be interesting to know. Well, you know, there was a study done on Lake Chautauqua, New York, back in the 50s. This is a long time ago. And they've come up with the number that uh, the musky fishery in Lake Chautauqua, New York, generated $1.8 million in 1950 dollars. 1950 dollars? Uh, Holy cow. Just from the musky fishery alone. So no kidding. Put that to today's dollars right. and see what. And that's one thirteen out, what, just one thirteen thousand acre lake. Yeah. So if that can generate that kind of dollar, and we're probably looking at what, $25 million in today's right. money? Right. For yeah. one thirteen thousand acre lake, what could the 50 some musky lakes in Hayward, Wisconsin do if we had fishery like that? Right. Right. It's be insane. Yeah. We have the bodies of water that could produce that too. That's just the sad part. I mean, even 
even the lakes that don't have muskies in them right now like i i picture like drummond area you know like they got that cisco lake they got esox lake i mean those lakes are big they're deep i mean they'd probably be perfect for them yep um you know it's just little towns that have these awesome lakes i mean you start putting leech lake fish in there i mean they'd be filled the bars would be filled with people you know it'd just be an awesome way to have money in the in for tourism in some of these small towns that are close to me but yeah we, we understand crazy. that there's a large you know it, it's a huge undertaking to get these fish raised to get to pay for them so on and yep. so forth but uh with social media and everything nowadays and how enthusiastic musky fishermen are i mean we're nuts the amount of money people are spending in musky fishing is is astronomical yeah the musky fishermen will cough it up right oh absolutely they will cough <laughs> up the guaranteed money. yep if the plan's oh there, God. it's uh, guaranteed. Um, no, yeah, no I don't think the money's the issue. I mean, the the problem, frankly, is uh, you know we've got we've got too many people in the in the DNR space. There's some there's some darn good ones, but uh, yeah, I mean, to put it very honestly, they like the sound of their own voice a heck of a lot more than they <laughs> like the truth, and. Well, that's why they that's why they keep slanting all these articles that they write that they slant oh, it the way they want it to come out sure yeah ah hopefully hopefully at least just some tests what has blown cool. my mind is how the biologists in the state of wisconsin could sit here and watch what went on in minnesota not one and not want to be part of it yeah and now it's going on in michigan <laughs> so we're surrounded by and, and you know I've caught bigger muskies in every state on the, the, exactly. the surrounds Minnesota than I have in, in the state of Wisconsin, yeah. uh, including yeah. Illinois. Right. Well, guys, uh. I remember taking out uh, Mr. Scott Hassett from the Wisconsin DNR. Uh, he came over and fished with me on Mille Lacs, and we put the boat in at Wealthwood. I dropped the trolling motor. I made two casts. I got a 49 and a half incher on a globe. He nets it for me and says, Oh my gosh, that's the biggest muskie I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm like, we've caught, we catch them like that all the time here. That yeah, was an he eye was, opener. He was a secretary of the DNR and he used to be attorney for Muskies Inc. And I thought when he got in office that we had a shot. At making fact, something happen. That's the first person that we contacted uh, when we started the Wisconsin Muskies Restoration Project. Yeah. And uh, uh, what was the biggest disappointment in my political career i guess you call it <laughs> was that he just immediately turned it over to the to the uh the fish heads and uh they circled the wagons and told us yeah. that we didn't know what we were talking about and, and uh, we didn't have a bio biology degree and, right right you didn't go to school for it man the one thing um, i see i think to really take note of is what disappoints me the most is how little uh angler input is taken into consideration in in the fisheries in general right yeah a few nets a couple it, times it's a, better than it was year. 30 or 40 years ago sure but, uh, yeah it's I still it's, it's still a problem that old pete mentioned new swanger uh he had a real problem with anybody that didn't have the sheepskin hanging on the wall he he almost just wouldn't talk to you hmm. yeah. <clears throat> yeah oh now i get it and we're not out here to uh <laughs> you know to point fingers directly to anyone we just we want the information out we just we right. want to talk about this and and we should note here too that we have uh we asked jordan uh weeks to come on our uh come on an episode and give us his inputs and you know we unfortunately we're not able to make that happen yet yeah so, um hopefully hopefully we soon. encourage and invite uh anyone out there that happens to have you know a, a knowledge base of this we would like to hear more stories from yeah from all the sides so different you know, perspectives yeah we don't really have a bias that way we just want big fish yeah big fish would be nice um i guess we didn't even get into your lake nancy rebuttal did we what's that your lake nancy rebuttal yeah well they don't want to hear it i don't want to hear it <laughs> i mean they, they again it was bias they did yeah. everything they could do to make it look like a failure. As Pete said, the biologist at the boat landing told him it was a big failure. Yeah. Well, dozens and dozens of 50 to 55 inch fish out of a 700 acre lake that partly unfishable. Yeah. Uh, 
pretty much tells its own story. Right. They can claim all they want. Yep. They t- they basically they tried to cover it up. That's my bottom line. Yep. Uh, Cause yeah, I mean, how is there no public information about this till like really today? I mean, yeah, when they, when they write these study references, they don't talk about native musculix or Lake Nancy. Yeah. But uh, I know Tanner Wild had like six over forty, Pete. I think in less oh, than yeah. two weeks. Yeah. Less than two weeks. Yeah, I'm not there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not the only one that can back it up. Heck, the, you know, I've, I've, I've talked to a couple people that actually caught and kept. 40 pounder legit 40 pounders uh the guy just passed away uh not too long ago but larry blaylock he used to work at the wild river over there he, he fished really? a fair amount i don't know i don't know how long it was, it was 42 yeah. 43 pound great big yeah he had a 55 inch on the wall over there yeah okay huh. yeah. Yeah. Yep. so wow well, the, yeah, Johnson, it, it, the johnson brothers from eau claire used to fish it and keep yeah. quiet too and they, they caught tons yeah. tons of them out of there Fact, I saw were, both, those were, were the first guys, Larry, that I bumped into uh, yeah. that that knew what they were doing out there, that, that were showing up in the middle of the week. Yeah. 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 And yeah. they, they were two of the guys that were in the the, rest, the restoration project with me and Bob really? Benson. And uh, yeah, they, they saw it firsthand and experienced it firsthand and they knew exactly How what was happening. Was, yeah. And uh, they knew the DNR wasn't being straight with us. Yeah. Yeah. That's a. A sad topic. Wish we had Nancy Lake still. That would have been cool. <laughs> well, I'm, or, sure st- I'm sure they're still being right. caught. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but. So what about fact, some the of the other the- waters throughout the state, uh, like uh, Wasota, for instance? What about it? Um, <clears throat> just uh, more information about the other lakes that have been stocked with leech uh, strain fish. Well, it, this this study that that uh, Weeks referred to uh, included Wasota, um, and I've got a real problem with what they've done there too. That used to be considered a receptor lake. In other words, you could stock in there anything you wanted to. Yeah. And, and the first Wisconsin chapter of Muskie's Inc. stocked leech lake fish in there for years, but I think probably a lot of them went over the dam or mm-hmm. under the dam or however that body of water i remember uh jason smith telling me that yeah, there's the but, same uh, here a couple years ago there had never been any natural reproduction in wasota proven yeah well a couple years ago they found some natural reproduction but then in doing some genetic work on those reproductions they found out they were hybrids between the wisconsin river strain or the chippewa river strain and leech lake strain mm-hmm. So they closed it off to being a receptor lake, yeah. saying that they found natural reproduction. Well, no, they didn't find natural right. reproduction. They found hybrid reproduction, reproduction because of the leech lake fish that had been stocked in there. So hmm. quit putting leech lake fish in there. Guess what's going to happen to the reproduction? Be There'll nice. be no more natural reproduction. So they cut their nose off to spite their face just because they don't like leech lake yeah. fish and they have a bias against leech lake fish. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, Jason Smith telling me that I think they kept there was a fifty inch that was tagged, and um, he caught no, who, somebody caught it. Um, not him, but um, somebody caught it and it kept going down the dams and every it was keep getting caught dam to dam to dam. Yeah, river. kept leaving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just jumping off bridges. Muskies <laughs> That's crazy. like dams. Let's yeah. face it, folks. Especially <laughs> Mississippi River strain. And they will swim. I know there was a fish that was tagged in Green Bay that was caught in the North Channel of Lake Huron. Oh, that's crazy. In Canada. Wow. Mm. That's I mean, funny. that baby swam a long right. ways. It was a cold journey. <laughs> that's crazy. Well, I think that's about it, right? Anything else to add, guys? Uh, I think we pretty much butchered the subject. Yeah. <laughs> For all I the good it'll probably still do. still snow in Texas. I just heard from my buddy, Kirk Kirkland. He sent me a picture driving around. There's still snow on the roads. Oh, wow. Is Herbie back? <laughs> I know we were Herbie, thinking about it. Yeah. Herbie panicked and came back before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> where, where we had power. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. So I guess. You know where can how can we move really forward with this? What is the best plan of attack? I mean, uh, Robbie, you want to see 
better musky fishing for the rest of your yeah. life obviously yeah. you've got a lot yeah. longer than us i've heard about it <laughs> i've heard about the really good musky fishing <laughs> you're gonna have to if things don't change you'll have to do what i did go on trips hook up the trailer and go <laughs> go <laughs> yeah i mean badly yeah i mean that's uh hopefully i mean that the big biggest reason that uh we really wanted to start start this podcast was for this very reason talk with these guys and um just get some information that really isn't that you know publicly known um i know you had the whole lake nancy thing up on your website what yeah, but that's been taken down for 10 years kept year. it up when we yeah didn't, but, yeah uh, so um it probably could be revived if somebody wanted to contact yeah. my old webmaster but he's sure. not he's not a friend of mine anymore so. yeah but uh i can tell you this from experience if yeah. you, if you yep. go to, if you go to fisheries that have the right genes and you know what you're doing every third or fourth fish is going to be a 50 incher right it's just that simple yeah i i i would agree yeah and that's not bad odds i'll take those odds any day than not knowing you know <laughs> but uh yeah any last words pete no, not really. Just, uh, I, I guess, frankly, there, I, <laughs> I don't know exactly how, but I, I think it should be pushed further. I, it, yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous that it's not happening. You know, Larry, Larry's got proof in history of, uh, of providing that we have no super genetic strain here in Wisconsin to protect yeah. anyway. Strain obviously yeah. does better. Yep. The results speak for themselves. I, I think the vast, vast yeah. majority of, of musky fishermen want it. So there's got to be a way at the end of the day, there's got to be a way to make something happen that a lot of people want. And, I mean, uh, and, and obviously uh, on a selfish side for all the businesses, if there's a way to educate, you know, yeah. uh, an area where these fish are going to come into the, the, at the end of the day, and from gas stations, to grocery stores, it's going to be yeah. more profitable too. More for people sure. are going to come look to fish. I mean, even the biggest thing, I mean, just looking at stocking records, because that's all I did when I moved up here, just to see what these lakes are like. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they're getting cut. I mean, it's like a third of what it used to be in early 2000s. You know, it's well, crazy. It's going to take money and politics. Yeah. Um, and one thing that was disappointing when we did do our project and for two or three years there, we started to get the support of the, the resort people. Yep. And then a few of the resort people started complaining they didn't like the bad publicity, so they put pressure on the, yep. on the powers that be, and they backed off. And uh, Chamber of Commerce sided with the DNR, and yep. I knew right then the game was over. Yeah, done. Because uh, without the business people, you got nothing. Right. Uh, business yep. people got the governor's ear, but if they don't talk to that ear, then nothing's going to happen. Right. Well, that's very good points. You need some honest politicians. Now, where are you going to find that? That's a contradiction in terms there. Contradiction. Honest politicians. Follow the money. Oh, that's funny. Follow, Follow the money, money that's yep. for sure. Yep, absolutely. Money drives everything, even the muskies. Even the muskies. Yep. Amazing how that works. Well, that's the point. This is going to yep. drive money. That I mean, yep. that's what gets to me. It's an amazing investment. If, if Sawyer County wants a shot in the arm financially yeah put some leech like fish in a dozen lakes and watch what happens watch in the what next happens. 10 years yeah you see here's it. a problem with some of the a lot of the local business people they're here for the short term sure quick turn they around, buy a business in wisconsin they try to build it up make a quick buck sell, sell it, it and yep. retire and go on down to florida yeah so they're not interested in the long term yep they don't care yep. so what can you do for me today right right that's sad yep that's a good point but yeah i well, think that's we, it yeah we certainly want to thank uh musky legends pete mana and larry ramsell Larry. for joining us on what? this uh intriguing insightful what an epic podcast uh, second i love podcast. it yeah yeah Very sorry cool. about the first one by the way guys the audio is absolutely junk on that one but uh today is going to be better <laughs> Yeah, Got we're that. just trying I'll to get this out. figured out. How yep, to, yep. How to do we just wanted to make sure everything's right for this particular podcast because uh, that was absolutely amazing. Can't believe we got you two uh, on it. Um, At the gosh, same that was time. Fun. Yep, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, we can't thank you guys enough for uh, for not only just coming on, but all you guys have invested into muskies uh, your entire lives. So we yep. owe a lot of it to you guys, so uh, thank you. Yep. Uh, anything you guys would like to promote? Obviously, Pete Mena, you got a YouTube channel. 
Oh yeah, check out yeah. the YouTube channel, uh, uh, PeteManor.com, is where you can find everything. And then uh, yep. other than that, uh, I would like to ask for uh, a little more warmth, a little global warming uh, to show up here for <laughs> for myself <laughs> and my good friends down south. Uh, yeah, no power. I, I think funny. they'd like your power back. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yep, that sounds good. Larry, anything with you? You still got some books for sale? Uh, I'm, my inventory is pretty low on the, on the my compendium, the history book. But yep. I do have some postcard books. But, okay. Uh, they can they can get them on Amazon. All right, too. I'll leave a link for that. Leave a link for all their their uh, stuff down in the description. Um, guys, you can check this. I was just Go ahead, say, Lee. Robbie. I got one quick mention of the yep. uh, uh, Wasa Musky Bash. Oh, yeah. Wanted to uh, put the word out there. There will be a musky show. It's a day yep. and a half. Uh, and that'll be March 19th and 20th. So wow. I'll probably swing yeah. by there on Saturday. Um, I'll be in Florida, Larry. Yeah. Huh? I'll be in Florida. Yeah, thanks, oh. Rob. <laughs> well, we want to thank all of you for stopping by. We appreciate it. Make sure you go down and uh, click the subscribe button if you have not done so. Please uh, uh, feel free to give some comments on this video. Uh, future podcasts we might uh, try to do, uh, future yep. guests, uh, what have you um check us out on instagram facebook of course check out pete on his instagram as well and i guess that's what we got for this one thank you so much for swinging by and checking yeah. it out and you you can stream it on podbean if you don't want to see Ooh, this podbean. if you don't want to look at us podbean spotify and apple it'll be on there so check it out guys thanks so much for watching thank you too for joining us this was fun i hope you guys enjoyed it